Nobody gets to write your destiny but you. Your future is in your hands. Your life is what you make of it. And nothing, absolutely nothing, is beyond your reach. The graph shows college completion through income and eighth grade test score indicators. The lower the income, the lower the likelihood of college completion, even with a high eighth grade test score. According to Randy Weingarten, president of the American Federation of Teachers, the most important component to academic achievement is income. When implementing government programs such as Race to the Top, it is important to keep the objectives clear and watch how these programs are implemented. So ultimately, we have to focus high performance, but we also have to give the teachers the tools and conditions they need to do their jobs and understand they can't do it all. Poverty, frankly, two-thirds of the achievement gap. Uh, dispositively, everybody agrees, pre-K, early childhood, when you prepare kids early, when, when you have pre-K um, services for kids, then ultimately kids are more prepared for schools. Um, the evaluation systems that were put into place under Race to the Top, not so good. And what's happened is in Tennessee in the last few weeks, people have said, we have to change this because what's happening is it's actually taking time from teachers from their teaching. They're basically become um, checklist makers in terms of bureaucratic um, processes as opposed to teaching and learning. Ms. Haycock, Education Trust President, explains the extent of the achievement gap between students of different races and economic backgrounds. She speaks of the lagging gap where low-income African-American and Hispanic students enter college. This rate is far below the rate of white high school graduates. Later, she explains the rate low-income minorities earn a diploma in college. The overall findings um, are both encouraging and discouraging. When you look at the data nationally, what you see is a pattern where low-income students and African-American Latino students enter college at rates below those of, of white high school graduates. But they also succeed in college at lower rates. The result of that being um, white young people in this country are earning bachelor's degrees at a, about a rate of 35%. So <clears throat> of every 100 kids we start with in kindergarten who are white, about 35 of them earn a bachelor's degree. Uh, when you look at the numbers for African American and Latino students, <clears throat> they're considerably lower. For African Americans, they're about one half the white rate, about one, about 18 out of every 100, and for Latinos, about 12 out of every 100. Neighborhoods have grown more segregated by class, leaving lower income students increasingly concentrated in lower quality schools. Ms. Klein, Education Week writer, explains government program Title I funding. Title I funding is a government-run program which issues $14 billion to low-income schools each year. In order to qualify for Title I funding, a school must have at least 40% of students enrolled in the free and reduced lunch program. This program issues money to over 56,000 low-income public schools each year. Well, Title I money is supposed to be focused on instruction. Um, one principal joked to me once, you can't buy the principal a desk with this money. Mm -hmm. So it's supposed to be um, used for instructional purposes. Uh, it can pay teacher salaries. Um, it can pay for coaches um, to help teachers do their jobs better. It can be used for professional development, um, instructional activities, um, things of that nature. While low-income schools welcome more funding, these schools are not promised the money the following year. The schools are told to be smart with their money and keep in mind they are not guaranteed the money the next year. So schools tend to hold back from spending and rarely hire new teachers. Hence, meaningful changes and enrichment programs are not initiated and sustained. Ms. Klein explains the problems with Title I funding and the problems associated to this funding. Um, what school districts were told to watch out for um, with the Title I money under the stimulus um, was to ensure that you know, they didn't want to um, be facing a funding cliff because this, the Title I money in the stimulus was sort of a one-time special thing. So school districts were cautioned um, not to do a ton of extra hiring with those dollars unless they felt like those positions could be sustained um, after the money went away. So school districts really had to think very carefully um, about how they would spend those funds because they weren't going to be sort of part of their bloodstream going forward. <laughs> Vice 
vice principal at Bedford Middle School in Westport, Connecticut, Mr. Fermato explains the difference in education quality between a poor district, such as Bridgeport, Connecticut, and a wealthy district, such as Westport, Connecticut. He not only takes note of the difference in education, but the lack of materials in a poor district. According to Mr. Fermato, Westport, Connecticut is a Derg A district, or above average district, and the education student receive is also above average. So that there's a, a difference in access to resources, as I mentioned before, and I can speak from personal experience. I have uh, two family members that teach in Bridgeport, um, and as an example, just one example, which doesn't really have anything to do with instruction, paper. Uh, access to just making copies alone is a challenge in Bridgeport. My sister-in-laws talk about not being able to make copies for kids. They have to share things. They can't write on worksheets. And that makes instruction in the classroom and working through their math teachers and working through math problems very difficult. Um, conversely, you come into a Westport classroom, kids have access to resources. They have access to, to papers multiple copies they can take at home and then when they get home they have um, access to electronics they can get on a computer use their iPads and they're accessing their homework and can work through problems and sometimes even communicate with teachers after school hours. In my humble opinion I believe that we should find a way to have the money more evenly distributed to the cities that need it and then there has to be a better way for monitoring that money. Um, you know, access to resources in Westport is great and they, Westport as, as a community is behind the education that is provided. So as I mentioned before, that $16,000 figure is a number that some people are surprised about, but when you look at the product, the education that the children have access to, it is impressive. So when you look at a district like Bridgeport or an inner city district like Hartford or even Norwalk, they don't necessarily spend the exact same amount of money. Why should the achievement gap matter? The American dream of hard work and education producing success is not ensured to all students. Educational institutions should be the equalizer rather than the divider.